Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to discuss deriving our long run marginal cost curve. And really in order to understand the derivation of our long run marginal cost curve, we first need to understand the derivation of our long run average cost curve, which I've drawn here, as the lower envelope of the firm's short run average cost curves. Because we do need this background, the plan in this video is to firstly briefly review the derivation of our long run average cost curve. I'm then going to go on to find our long run marginal cost curve. And lastly, in the third part of the video, I'll discuss two features of the long run marginal cost curve, which are good to know. If you're already comfortable with deriving the long run average cost curve, you can just skip straight to the second part of the video. All of these parts are time stamped in the description. Okay, so just really quickly, in order to derive our long run average cost curve, we first have to recognize that in the short run, the firm faces a fixed input to production. So usually we say that capital is fixed. And this really means that when we draw a single short run average cost curve, so something like I have here, well, this curve shows the firm's average costs when capital is fixed at some level. Of course, there are lots of different levels of capital that the firm could hold in the short run, however, and it follows that there are many different possible short run average cost curves, each of which corresponds to a different level of capital. So for illustration, I've just drawn five short run average cost curves here, and this corresponds to five different levels of capital. Now in the long run, the firm can choose whichever level of capital that they wish. And actually the determining factor in this decision is the level of capital that minimizes the cost of production for the firm. So to find the long run average cost associated with producing any amount, so let's just say Q star, what we're going to do is we're going to trace a line up and the first curve that we hit, well that corresponds to the cheapest possible way available to the firm of producing Q star. And so that level here will be the long run average cost for producing Q star and the level of capital uh, that corresponds to that short run average cost curve will be the level of capital that the firm will choose in the long run if it wants to make Q star units. If we do the same exercise for all of the possible quantities that the firm could produce, we essentially trace out the lower parts of our short run average cost curves. Hence the idea of the long run average cost curve as being the lower envelope of our short run average cost curves. Lastly, once we recognize that a firm can hold many, many different levels of capital and each of those levels of capital would be associated with a unique short run average cost curve, so something like what I have here and even more short run average cost curves, then once we take the lower envelope here, we get a much smoother long run average cost curve which is hopefully familiar to you from your textbooks. So that was a very short summary of finding our long run average cost curve. I do have a longer video on deriving our long run average cost curve that I'll link to below just in case uh, you need that extra detail. In order to find our long run marginal cost curve, I'm going to do a very similar thing, except I'm going to trace out the long run marginal cost for each quantity. So let's take a point, let's look at Q star again. And we know from the derivation of our long run average cost curve that there is an associated short run average cost curve that is set at the level of capital that the firm will choose in the long run if it wants to produce Q star. But this time I'm also going to add in the short run marginal cost curve that's associated with that short run average cost curve. And similar to the short run average cost curve, because this short run marginal cost curve is constructed with capital set at the level that minimizes the cost of producing Q star. So that long run level of capital that the firm will choose if the firm produces Q star in the long run. Well, we can read off from that marginal cost curve, the long run marginal cost of producing Q star. So it will be right at this level here. And that will be just one point on our long run marginal cost curve. And I'll indicate that uh, point with a red mark. So we can take another point, maybe Q star star just here, and this will get messy. So I've taken away those previous curves for Q star. But what we'll do is we'll add in our short run average and our short run marginal cost curves. And again, we can read that long run marginal cost just off that short run marginal cost curve, just like that. And this is how we construct the long run marginal cost curve. Now there will be a point right here at the minimum of our long run average cost curve. Let's just call that Q prime. 
And at this point, the corresponding short run average cost curve will be at a minimum as well. So the two curves will actually be a tangent to one another. And at this point, the marginal cost curves will be actually equal to the average cost curves. And this is because marginal cost always intersects the minimum of our average costs. And that's true for both the short run and the long run curves. And so at this level here, well, our long run marginal cost for Q prime is the same as our long run average cost for Q prime. Let's just do one more point. Let's think about Q prime prime. And actually on this side of our long run average cost curve, so the right hand side of the curve, our marginal cost, I can hope you can see, is above our average cost. So just up here like this. And so I hope you can see that there. All right, so in order to get our long run marginal cost curve, we can just connect all of these points. And I get something like uh, these red, this red line here. Of course, I've only demonstrated this by looking at four points. And similar to our long run average cost curve, you can imagine that if we find the long run marginal cost associated with every possible quantity that the firm could produce, uh, we would get a smoother curve, so something like this. So that's the derivation of our long run marginal cost. Now there are two features of our long run marginal cost curve that I would like to point out. The first feature is that our long run marginal cost curve is really much flatter than our short run marginal cost curves, which are pretty steep like this. And this is because in the short run, the firm is constrained in its use of capital. In the long run, if the firm wants to produce one more unit of output, well, the firm is free to vary the amount of capital or the amount of labor or any of its other inputs that they that they use. And so they can choose the cheapest combination of inputs in order to get that additional quantity. In the short run, the firm doesn't have this freedom. It's constrained in its use of, of capital. And as a result, the long run marginal cost curve increases at a slower rate in comparison to the short run marginal cost curve and is thus flatter. The second feature is one that I mentioned before, and that is that the long run marginal cost curve will go through the minimum of our long run average cost curve. And to explain this, we can refer to our usual explanation that we invoke in the case of our short run cost curves. And that is, well, if average costs are decreasing, then marginal costs must be lower than average costs. If average costs are increasing, then marginal costs must be above average costs. I do have another video on that logic and I'll link to it below. The video is on the short run case, uh, but the logic is the same in both the short and the long run. So it will still be useful for you if you need it. All right, that's it. There is one other video on this stuff that I did want to do, which includes a diagram that links the relationship of our long run curves to uh, the firm's total cost curve. So when I get around to it, I'll link to it below. It's an alternative way of seeing all of these relationships. Um, and so it's pretty neat. All right, I hope that that did help. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thanks to my subscribers so far and I hope you guys are having a lovely day or night.